hello and welcome, this time we're checking out shower thoughts, and they can be quite insightful. So let's get started, I already opened up the first one. We laugh at dogs getting excited when they hear a bark on TV. But if TV was a non-stop stream of unintelligible noises and then someone suddenly spoke to you in your language, you'd be pretty fucking startled too. That's actually a pretty good point. Uh, happens quite often when watching foreign TV as a native English speaker, as they tend to just randomly drop in words that uh, that are used in their language, as they have no equivalent to the English word. Uh, doesn't stop me uh, barking at uh, TV when uh, it happens. Yeah, but yeah, the English language shares words uh, with uh, many languages. And it's true, like uh, a lot of the new words are just, just, you know, they have no English equivalent. Uh, languages that actually have more letters uh, tend to handle it very, very well. So, for example, even even uh, Hungarian uh, can uh, handle it very well because you you have you, you can somehow spell it out. You just you just have the letters to do it in a way. It's it's very close. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's it's kind of closeish. Uh, languages that can handle it very well, like Japanese or like. Chinese, I guess. I don't know. I guess I'm not exactly a linguist, but uh, yeah. Ultimately, I think like languages probably need to be uh, looked into eventually. But it's kind of like traditional. Like no one wants to change their language, but uh, languages are languages are always evolving. So it's not something like oh yeah, it just English is the same way. No, like uh, English changed a, a lot over the over like few hundred years. So. It just happens, but people just can assume that it's not going to happen. Uh, manuals for TVs are regarded as useless, but in 5000 years, they are as valuable as uh, Rosetta Stone. It contains the same text in uh, 20 different languages and alphabets. <laughs> Imagine that. We kill each other with bombs and whatnot, and uh, we just become cavemen or whatnot. I don't fucking know. I don't know how, how would it happen, but let's just say that we just get a new start. Just... Just a bunch of uh, dumb idiots who don't even know a language, because that could happen. I I imagine if that. Imagine that no one taught you languages. Well, how would that? How would it really work? No, no one re actually running experiments like this. But if you had like a totally new group of people, and they were not taught languages, they not taught any of the knowledge that we have right now. What would they do? They would even struggle to come up with a language. They would probably have some very basic language. And if they just had this language available, uh, then that could be like a baseline. Not anymore. These days, you're lucky to get some pictograms and a link to the website. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, today is the Mondayest Thursday ever. What? Whatever. They don't let you smile in passport photos because they want you to look the same as if you were standing in line at customs for an hour. What? Ready to kill myself? <laughs> passport agent here. You actually can smile, but it has to be a soft smile. Too exaggerated and they will reject the photo. As others have said, they prefer no smile because facial recognition tech works best when you are not smiling. Yeah. So it's no longer just like, hey, I guess you look like the same guy, but they're actually doing facial recognition properly. And growing up is realizing you get more joy out of uh, seeing others open presents than you do from opening your own. I like my presents true, but yeah, I guess this is a good point. It, like, giving presents, I guess, just becomes more important than receiving presents. Or at least becomes as... Because when you're young, you just don't... Maybe, maybe just my childhood. I was not expected to give presents. <laughs> I just say that. I'm still young. Good to know. Maybe that could be a good thing. You know, just encourage your children. That's something to think about. You know, like just encourage your children to also uh, give you gifts in their way. Whatever they can. If Google continue. To keep Google Earth updated, then in a few hundred years, people will actually be able to virtually walk around his in history. That's an amazing point. 
That's a pretty cool tile. Yeah, exactly. If we don't kill each other first. Hopefully no. Imagine that. You just... Yeah. Because... Imagine like a few thousand years. That That's gonna be so weird. Even in like a few hundred years, you're probably gonna have like... Everyone's gonna be immortal. They're gonna be like... You know, j they're just gonna be hybrids. Everyone's gonna have like enhanced memory. And whatnot. And we will look like fucking cavemen. What we have right now, we'll feel like... I don't know, the wild west. At best. Or maybe we feel like... You know, it. it we're not that, not that different. We still... Even like a few thousand years ago, we live in cities. It's not it's not fundamentally different. And humanity can change quite a bit. Maybe we just get wiped out. <laughs> Hopefully not. Careful not to wake up uh, the little metal uh, murder dogs. If society collapsed, Amazon warehouses will be fought over fiercely for being uh, giant real life loot boxes. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. This is uh, a good tip. <laughs> Let's do that. Tom and Jerry are best friends, but Tom has to pretend to hate Jerry in order to protect Jerry so Tom's owner doesn't replace Tom with a cat that actually wants to kill Jerry. Yeah, that's actually a good point. <laughs> that's an excellent point. <laughs> God damn it. You can definitely eliminate your own job. And the problem with these days is that, you know, you can't just like... That these these advancements don't really... Ah, oh, I'm getting political. Like, if I eliminated my own job, I would eliminate my usefulness. Not like, oh yeah, I guess I'm set for life. No. If I eliminate my own job, I'm just fired. <laughs> I'm just fired. Not like, oh yeah, I guess I'm done for life now. Like, okay, nothing to worry about anymore. Nope. You're fired. <laughs> I guess the robots can do your job now. Aren't uh, there are a few episodes uh, when they are actually show they are friends and do actually pretend to hate each other because of the owner? I don't know. It's been a long time since I watched Tom and Jerry, but I guess that's a kind of cool uh, cartoon to watch. It's not too bad. Due to most people not having full-blown professional kitchens, a cooking show that only uses basic ingredients and a microwave uh, to create dishes would probably be pretty popular. Interesting. I don't know, I'm not super into cooking. I just don't like spending too much time cooking. I, I, I kind of cook a little bit, but I'm not super into cooking myself. Uh, cooking Cheap uh, was a show like that. It ran on PBS out on uh, Runak uh, VA during the 80s and 90s and was hosted by two very droll and funny uh, guys who would make very basic dishes using common ingredients. The show's uh, set featured the mismatched appliances and walls that looked like uh, they were about to collapse. Sometimes their recipes didn't work out, which added to the fun. They would occasionally do segments uh, dressed as women from the 1800s to talk in a falsetto voices about antique kitchen tools. Though it sounds weird, it was uh, one of the best, uh, on, most honestly funny and interesting things on TV at the time. Wow. They definitely went over the top. I kind of like this because, you know, they just, they just had a cooking show and they're just like, fuck it, let's just like up it. And that's kind of cool. And uh, the, the premise is not too bad. I think it kind of makes sense. Because when I'm looking for, it's actually kind of smart because when I'm looking to make something, then I'm not going to like make some, some restaurant dish. I'm not, not doing that. I want something that's easily done. It's easy and fast. That That's kind of what I want. Easy, fast, and of course, it's good. And kind of healthy. Okay. <laughs> My point is, I definitely value... Uh, e well... The effort... The, the lower effort I have to put into it, the better it is. And you shouldn't have like, a, oh my god, the fancy spices, because you might have that if you're like very, if you just cook all the time, but you might not have all the, the special spices all the time. I don't know, I think there's like definitely a point to this. You can tell a lot about an organization by the quality of the toilet paper they provide their employees. Come on, their jobs. It's gonna be the cheapest shit. Uh, can literally. At my old job, we knew, uh... 
uh, visit by our corporate overlords was imminent because the urinal cakes were changed and the uh, single ply sandpaper was temporarily replaced with the good stuff. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> yeah, very smart. In SpongeBob, there are times when a SpongeBob uh, goes to work and Patrick is already there eating a Krabby Patty. This implies that uh, there is another chef that works uh, before SpongeBob. I don't watch SpongeBob. <laughs> this Patty? The Patty Vault? I don't know. I don't know this one. YouTubers who specialize on reaction videos exist to fulfill our fantasy of showing a video to a friend and them reacting like we want them to. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is this it? I don't know. Is it? Uh, this is not a reaction video. This is like a, a prompted comedy in a way. We're just talking about stuff. This is not a reaction video. I guess. Remember when the fine bros tried to trademark the term react? <laughs> I heard about it. I didn't wanna, but I heard about it. I don't know. I, I don't like to think about too much what kind of value I add, I guess, if any at all. <laughs> I don't know. Feels like sometimes I just don't add enough value, but sometimes I, I feel like maybe maybe I do. I don't know. This is really hard to say because I'm really tough on myself. I just I just like to make videos, I guess. Man. Given how often uh, your character dies in video games, in most timelines, the bad guys win. That's very smart. And and it just shows how impossible the odds are. Even in video games, it's just like, the odds are so impossible. You just lose most of the time. You lose. It's not lose and... That's actually a very interesting uh, thing that reminds me of. There are games where you you fail, but not lose. Big difference. I wonder if this affects the psychology of people who play video games. Because, you know, you lose, you reload. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but, you know, I, I do like this, this aspect of it, that you don't lose. You you suffer a setback, you, you fail a little bit, but you still keep going. But it's not, you don't lose. You, you're not, it's not over. Except in Dark Souls, where your ability to respawn after death is canon. Yeah. Another game, where ability to respawn after death. But that's actually, you don't respawn after death. You just don't die, is a, a Planscape Torment. Play that game if you haven't uh, done it before. Unless you're the bad guy. Okay, whatever. Seems like they don't have too much to say about it. When uh, a starving predator is chasing prey, they are both running for their lives. Good, 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 good idea. Actually... <laughs> The predator could probably uh, get away with not eating the prey. But that's technically true. Even if uh, the predator uh, doesn't catch the prey, you might get another prey. But ultimately, you not like you have a fridge full of gazelles. So ultimately, the stakes are real. Uh, due to the existence of fireworks and in Lord of the Ring movies, Middle Earth, historically speaking, is probably only a few hundred years away from guns and military explosives. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> but again, you might not have that in a culture, in a in a scenario. Well, actually, we would, I guess, because guns are still better. But the Lord of the Ring universe also has very powerful uh, forces, other than. Uh, well, guns, I guess. Uh, even if you had guns, like, magic. Like, imagine if, for example, there was a magic that allowed uh, the soldiers to be immune to guns. Right? I don't know fucking how. I don't know. Let's just say, like, slow down projectiles that are were not made of wood or whatever. Then you have... Then guns are useless. Guns are useless when you have armies with mages who can slow down projectiles. Or whatever, I don't know. The point is, it's not necessarily, uh, obviously, 
uh, gonna be a, a big thing. It's gonna feel so good to moo as a cow. Probably feels really good to moo. Okay. I don't know. My sister had cows. We used to moo at them and they would moo back. It was pretty funny. They were happy cows. Sometimes they would lick uh, you like a dog. That was not as fun. <laughs> Come on! Betsy love you! You actually are the boss fight for every enemy in the game. I do like the video game logic because it just makes you think of life so differently. But yeah, I guess. But it's also a boss fight in a way that they have to lose. Imagine that. Imagine that you were like an NPC in a video game and you you know you're gonna just gonna fight the protagonist who's gonna beat you. Uh, some vampires always say that living forever is a curse, but they can actually just go to the direct sunlight and uh, die whatever they want to. A lot of vampires in any Rise books choose to go that route. Yeah, ultimately I feel like if you if you already have forever life that I obviously want, you can always end it. But I don't think people would want to. I, I think people just like... Yeah, obviously people are just like used to how things are. They don't want to die, obviously. Alt, actually, they kind of... Maybe they don't, don't, don't mind dying too much. Because when you get super old... I'm getting a little grim here. When you get super old and just everything is wrong with you and you're just suffering. Some people just want that. But obviously, that's not, not, not what I'm suggesting. Like, imagine if everyone was like forever 20. And like, would you want to die then? And most people, if you just look at the stats, most people don't want to die, obviously. If, if they want to die, they usually like because like uh, some mental issue is going on. I'm not saying they're stupid. Obviously, that's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying that uh, some uh, mental things that can be fixed by psychology almost always uh, are the problems. Actually, the suicide stats are pretty high, higher uh, for guys. Uh, probably because they just don't deal with the emotions. The build up to Christmas Day actually feels way more like Christmas than the actual day. Well, yeah, because you have some big expectations and, you know, the process is always more fun. You can enjoy the process and I guess you can enjoy the reward as well. But, you know, I guess that Christmas is not just about the, the day, I guess. Maybe the dogs are afraid of vacuum cleaners because they are intimidated by anything that can do one continuous woof <laughs> i don't know they hear more than us i guess so maybe the vacuum cleaners sound uh, more intimidating well right. my dog cats were petrified of the vacuum i read about saying the bad dog stuff like that to the vacuum so they could identify with it wow <laughs> with it uh well i guess i went too far and i kind of spanked the vacuum you're taking it too far. Now, when I get it out of my 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 dog, like wedges herself between me and the vacuum. It's like her friend now. Ten out of ten, good girl. Yeah, but it's a friend that you just put in the closet. The farther away you can wave hi to someone, the closer you are as friends. The farther away you can wave hi to someone, the closer you are as friends. So, they are far away, but you still say hi. This doesn't necessarily check out, because you have those people who are just like, Hey, it's Christmas. A Merry Christmas to you. Don't small talk me. Merry Christmas to you. No small talk. Okay. Okay, see you next Christmas, I guess. That's it. Okay, let's check out one more. Then call it quits. Having morning wood and simultaneously an intense need to urinate is a cruel biological joke. Yeah, that's not exactly uh, comfortable. I'm not sure how this goes for women, I guess. Back when uh, that whole thing started, we didn't need to aim 
that in the toilet. We could just walk into a field and let it fly. Yeah. This is why I pee openly in the backyard in the morning. Our yard is walled. <laughs> Come on, I need more tips. Yes, but on the other side, you are not uh, peeing in bed by mistake. Yes, but come on, good tips. Okay. You have four options. Piss all over the back of the toilet and the wall. No, I'm not doing that. Bend your dick down. No, I'm not bending my dick. Toward the bowl and barely piss for five straight minutes. No, you can tilt yourself, right? Do the backwards crab walk stance. Point your dick toward the front of the bowl. Run the risk of pissing on your own face. <laughs> no, I'm not taking that chance, man. Piss into the bathtub or the sink. If you're an animal. No, we're not doing that shit. It's easy. You just angle yourself a little bit. Easy. You don't bend your dick. You just angle yourself. Come on. Who's this rookie? All you're saying, uh, you just bend over 90 degrees at the waist. Are some risk takers? No, 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 that's smart. You you think you got everything figured out until you pee up your own nose? How would you do that? <laughs> you don't get it, the land, land uh, lot. You don't get it, man. So apparently a lot of people have uh, small pee pee. No, I don't. Or have toilet designed with the male appendages in mind. With extra length toward the front of the bowl. This, this guy doesn't get it. Get in the shower and piss wherever you want. No. This guy doesn't get it. This guy doesn't get it. Maybe he's not even a guy. He doesn't get it. He doesn't know the technique. He's obviously a rookie here. Doesn't know the technique. I I, I accept it. Anyway guys. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, see you next time.